Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution 2. And it's, it's been a while and I'm so sorry that it's been a while. I've been so incredibly busy that getting this third episode out has taken me like two weeks longer than I originally wanted it to take me. So I apologize on that, but we're back and what we're doing today is our Carnivore Canyon. So in today's episode, we are actually adding two carnivores. We are adding the uh, Allosaurus as well as the Carnotaurus. And you can see we're starting off by doing some path work and just kind of framing out where the enclosures will go. I really wanted this uh, little area to be a gradient in height. So not only are both habitats uh, kind of sloped upwards towards the back of the habitat, but this whole area is going down in elevation from the top of the canyon to the bottom of the canyon. So that was kind of the goal and my kind of overarching theme, I guess, or the main thing that I wanted to accomplish with this area. We are, of course, building on the California map. And this one is a bit difficult because in between this area that we're building now and where we built in episode two, where we have our mountain aviaries, there is this big chunk where we can't build. So this map has like an island on it and we're not able to build. You can see we are right up against the world map border there. So we have this kind of long, narrow passageway on this side. And so that's where I came up with the idea of doing like a carnivore canyon. Uh, not only do I love alliteration and that works really well, uh, but we hadn't added any major carnivores to the park yet. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. What we're working on now is a bit of a backstage area. So as we did in episode one, if you missed it, not only did we add Main Street and our first big like mixed herbivore habitat, but I also spent a little bit of time working on a backstage area, of course, mostly implied because the guests in this game just go wherever they please and they just meander wherever you put paths down. But I wanted to imply the um, implication of a backstage area for the keepers, the scientists, the, you know, whoever's going to work in this park, that that would be where dinosaurs were, um, bred, housed, uh, cared for, you know, medical stuff, all that kind of fun stuff. So this is kind of like the carnivore, um, like base headquarters, do we want to call it? It's the carnivore headquarters. Um, but essentially there's some three little holding pens in here. The idea being that if there's a dinosaur that's sick, if they are raising juvenile dinosaurs, um, something that the dinosaur can't be in the actual habitat, maybe it needs close monitoring or something like that, they can bring them back here to these little holding pens, holding enclosures, whatever you want to call them, and keep a really close eye on them. So they do have two entrances, uh, one on either side, just for easy convenience of getting the dinosaur in and out. And then I do make sure to make a backstage kind of entrance path, and that's what this is right here. So this path is going to be actually separated by this uh, solid wall. So as a guest, you don't see over this wall, but this is where in my mind, the vehicles are gonna drive back and forth. And I left it nice and wide and open so that any kind of trucks, trailers, stuff like that, stuff that you would need to haul massive dinosaurs with could fit down there. So that is that little area. We go back and kind of decorate it and add a lot of those little uh, individually placed decoration items because with the, oh goodness, was it the last update? It wasn't a DLC, it was it was an update. Yeah, that's right, it was it was like free update one point, oh, I don't remember. All the, all the updates are meshing in my head between different games. The last update, we got a whole bunch of placeable items, uh, including some like dinosaur carriers, some crates, bins, all this kind of backstagey stuff that goes with the DSW stuff. Um, and I think it's, it's great. It's absolutely phenomenal. So we place a whole bunch of that in that little backstage area just to make it look like a backstage area because uh, decoration in Jurassic World Evolution 2 is so slim, um, but the, the backstage area is one of those kind of um, decorative styles that's really kind of fleshed out in the game. 
There you can see I put the Allosauruses in and got them in their habitat. So those are the first ones on the top of the mountain. And then going down is the Carnotaurus. Now, I have a question for you guys. It's a very important question. Um, do you think any other carnivore could theoretically live happily with either a Carnotaurus or the Allosaurus because I really wanted to make these mixed species habitats and I know I can make it work because I can turn it off in game and you know have them not kill each other and stuff like that but are there any dinosaurs that you think realistically would have been able to cohabitate with either one of these species because I would love to put in another carnivore species. I'm specifically looking for other large carnivores, um, not necessarily other large herbivores that they probably would have left alone, but I love the idea of making these mixed carnivore habitats. Anyway, let me know down in the comments below if you are a paleo nerd, dinosaur nerd, and know the answer and can help me out because I am still very much learning my dinosaurs, I would greatly appreciate it. I kind of talked over it, but we've already finished. Those little pointy paths on the side at the very start of this little canyon walk area is meant to be a bit of a nature walk. So I made them pointy to resemble mountains, at least that was what my mind was thinking at the time. Uh, and I just kind of added a little what would be like a nature walk. So in a lot of zoos or zoological parks, you see um, the emphasis on the environment as well and little walks where there's some information on trees or plants or bushes or something like that and so that was kind of my idea is just to have this little path kind of an offshoot of the main path like a little garden walk and it's not you know it's not really a garden here because we're in the alpine uh in yosemite valley i believe is where this park is taking place but something like that we'll call it a nature walk not a garden walk a nature walk um so i placed a couple signs there just to simulate the fact that you know as you're kind of walking through there's going to be some education on maybe the environment the surrounding uh trees and plants and, and uh, foliage and stuff like that. Moving on to the inside of the Allosaurus habitat, placing lots of rocks and doing some terrain paint. Um, I wasn't really imagining these would be pace tracks uh, for the Allosauruses, but more so just the uh, where the vehicles would drive to check on them. Um, but basically just some well-worn paths in there. We're gonna do the same thing for the Carnotauruses as well once we get to there, but we've gotta outline their habitat uh, first. I am for both of these habitats doing double fencing thinking that if we were going to keep dinosaurs in real life we've all seen Jurassic Park right we've all seen that basically in every single movie the massive large carnivore escapes and eats people so I am taking precautions which Probably, honestly, <laughs> if it was in a movie, still wouldn't work. They would still find a way to escape because, you know, that's the excitement of a movie. But in my mind, this is going to allow us to keep our dinosaurs and have them not eat uh, not eat people, <laughs> not escape. So we have this double electrified fence. The inner one is a really beefy, hefty fence. And the outside one is more of a light, uh, light fence, but just that kind of double protection with some plants in between to kind of give a buffer of um, viewing of the dinosaurs because as you're walking by, you're meant to go to the different viewing galleries and go view the dinosaurs from there um, and not necessarily look at them as you are walking down the pathways. Now, of course, if you ha could get a view on a dinosaur and um, see it from the pathways, I'm sure people would stop and look, but that is not the intended purpose. So just doing a little bit more like, um, purposeful landscaping, we'll call it. So a lot of my landscaping is randomly placing these different trees all over the place and just the different varieties of trees to make the forest look a little bit more thick and lush than just the terrain brush does or the foliage brush does. But in between the habitat fences is more of a, um, what did I just call it? Like a intended uh, landscaping <laughs> so that it's uh, plant every other tree, bush, tree, bush, you know, stuff to look nice and, and whatnot. We are finishing up the Carnotaurus habitat just there. Both are pretty simple. I wanted to keep nice wide open spaces. Um, oh, and you know what? I totally forgot. I didn't feed my dinosaurs. Oops. They have, <laughs> they have no goats. They have no meat tray. My bad. <laughs> I'm such a, I'm such a terrible, uh, 
dinosaur park owner. I'll have to add that in the next episode if I remember. Um, but they don't have any food right now, so that's kind of a bummer. But anyway, we are working on a little bit of an amenity kind of area. Um, there's a long gap in between like when you get off the monorail and then you get down to here where there, there are no amenities in between. So this is going to be like a little little stopping area um, for the guests to, you know, get food, get drink, shop, spend some money, you know, fund the park, stuff like that. And then after this, I don't actually have a plan for what I want to add after this little carnivore canyon area. I picked the Allosaurus and the Carnotaurus because they are two of my favorite carnivores in game. The Carnotaurus specifically being my absolute favorite because it sits like a chicken and I just absolutely love the sitting animation for the Carnotaurus. I think it's so funny, it's so great, and I just, all around, I think it's such a, I don't know, just like an iconic dinosaur for me. It's probably just because it's one of the few dinosaurs that I can recognize like just by looking at it and not having to have anybody help me, but it's, I love it. I love it. It's such a funny, quirky looking dinosaur when it sits down like a little chicken and I just think it's funny and I fall in love with it. So that is why I decided to add that one. And then the Allosaurus, I love, um, I specifically love its exit animation. If you guys have ever watched it uh, exit the hatchery, it's such a ferocious, angry dinosaur where it kind of shoves its face through the gate and pushes its way out, and I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, so I just kind of picked those guys. Just no really rhyme or reason other than I just really like them as dinosaurs. And I really didn't want to use a lot of hybrids in this park. So I know we added... Um, we added Pierce in the last one, but it, he's not really a hybrid. He's just a special um, Kentrosaurus, right? And then we added Bumpy as well. Also not a hybrid, just a special Ankylosaurus. Um, but I didn't really want to add like the uh, Scorpius Rex or the Indominus Rex or anything like that in this area because I wanted it to be very very like natural, very hiking trail-esque, I guess, very alpine, nature-y feeling. I feel like the Indominus Rex or any of those like majorly dangerous dinosaurs, and I know I feel kind of silly saying like majorly dangerous because all the carnivores would be dangerous, um, but I feel like it would need to be in a much more like containable area um, with special precautions, stuff like that. So potentially we'll add one of those guys to the park, but I just didn't feel like they fit this area that well. We are almost done. There's going to be some end cinematics here for you guys just to check out what I built. This overall only really took me about an hour and a half to get all put together, like all my my different sittings all together in one. Um, only about an hour and a half, so the end cinematics are coming up. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you enjoyed it, what dinosaurs you want to see next. And then most importantly, if any dinosaurs you think would get along with the Allosaurus or the Carnotaurus, I would love to hear it and be able to add them to our uh, exhibits. But yeah, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, leave a like down on the video. It really does help me out and I greatly do appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button if you're interested in any more Jurassic World Evolution 2 content or Planet Zoo or Prehistoric Kingdom or any of those games. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye!